Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Electric Bike Journal and our latest episode from our Tech Check series, the Shimano powered Orbea Cayman SUV. Now this is a class one or class three SUV electric bike. That means this bike is versatile and comfortable for everything from commuting around town to all day or multi-day adventures. Let's find out more about the Cayman SUV. As with all of our tech checks, this is less of a review and more of an opportunity for us to work with the brand to share with you about a bike's features, the tech, the specifics of the bike, and ultimately who it's best suited for. Now there are two different models of the Cayman. There's the Cayman SUV, which we have right here, and we'll be focusing the tech check on, and the Cayman, which is uh, the more urban focused version of the two. And we did review that last year, and I'll go ahead and link that above so you can check that review out if you're interested. Now, if you're a friend of the channel, you've probably seen the Cayman SUV make its appearance in a handful of videos over the last few months as we discuss e-bike tech, uh, different how-tos and informational videos here on the channel. And in the course of that time, we've really had a lot of opportunity to ride the Cayman SUV in a lot of different environments, which really speaks to the SUV nature of this bike. Um, it is designed to be versatile, uh, comfortable, uh, something that you can really spend your days commuting on, uh, equally go out for all day adventures or multi-day adventures if you have the time, uh, which we definitely have explored uh, everything this bike has to offer. Orbea presents the Cayman SUV as a trekking bike. Uh, this is something meant for everyday, all day adventures, uh, both urban, you know, paved type riding for commuters, uh, as much as it is for gravel rides and, and going out onto some light single track and really exploring the woods, uh, making your own adventure. In every discipline of cycling, a bike's geometry really is the deciding factor when it comes to a bike's performance. Uh, in that regard, I'm speaking about the stability of the bike uh, as you're riding it, the predictability, and equally the comfort of a bike for the rider. Orbea's all-terrain geometry that they use, both on the Cayman and the Cayman SUV, really is what sets this bike up to be predictable and to be comfortable in all different types of terrain, uh, whether that be just going out for a leisure ride or loading this thing up with various cargo or maybe putting a kid on the back and letting it be comfortable and predictable and stable in all those environments. Let's go over the different models that Orbea offers of the Cayman SUV. Uh, just like the Cayman, there is a 40, 30, 10 series. All three of these have a different component spec uh, with the 40 series seeing a different drive unit, uh, but still a Shimano. Uh, price points start at $37.99 and work their way up to $52.99 uh, for the 10 series class three model that we see here. All of these models will come in both a top bar and a mid bar. So the top bar is Orbea's version of a step over, and then the mid bar is not quite a full step through, but it's a slope top tube coming down in the middle of the C-tube there, just like the Cayman model we reviewed before. The Cayman SUV specifically comes with either a class one or a class three, so a 20 or 28 mile per hour restriction. Uh, the Cayman itself, the urban focused one, does not have that offering. So if you are looking for a class three enabled bike, the SUV would be the option for you. The Cayman SUV has a high polished hydro formed aluminum frame, so very smooth welds, the paint looks very nice. And by doing that hydro formed aluminum, uh, not only are they able to make this bike ride uh, as comfortable as they possibly can, um, while still being durable and strong for performance, uh, they're able to shave a little bit of weight by integrating that battery into the down tube. Um, so there's less brackets and, and mounting points to hold it secure. Uh, so it allows them to shrink that down a bit, uh, as well as being able to guide those uh, internally routed cables through the frame in a very strategic way to keep the clutter down and keep the noise down, as well as allowing Orbea to design a very nice looking bottom bracket shell to 
host that Shimano motor into the frame, uh, really kind of shields it well and lets this bike be very stealthy and not really look like an electric bike up front. In the rear, we don't see any suspension. This is a hardtail frame, um, but up front we do see a 100 millimeter fork across all the models. This one specifically does have that Fox 34 AWL fork, which feels very nice. Um, other features that we see on the Cayman SUV are an illumination light on the top of the head tube there. Uh, this is something that's always on when you're riding the bike. Uh, it does have an on off switch though, so you can turn it off if you want to. The Cayman SUV will come with a front and rear light from Lazine, and it will come with these larger fenders from the Cayman model. They're a little bit wider, a little bit shorter, and then they do have these really wide plastic uh, mud guards on the back of them, but those are aluminum fenders. So nice and sturdy, and they do a great job at kind of catching all of that muck that comes up uh, when you're riding in the nasty weather. And before we get into the specs of the different Cayman SUV models, it is worth mentioning that the Cayman SUV also has a more beefed up rear end. So the dropouts and the rear end of this bike as a whole is a, a little bit more sturdy than the regular Cayman model. And this was intentionally done to be follow me uh, compatible. And those are the cargo trailers for kids. Uh, so the rear end there is just designed a little bit more so to handle towing the trailer and kind of pulling a heavier load along with you on those fun rides. So let's talk a little bit about the different build specs of the Cayman SUV models and then discuss a little bit about who this bike really is for. Starting at $37.99 is the Cayman SUV 40. Uh, this has an SR Suntour XC34 front fork with a Shimano Acera eight speed drivetrain and Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes. It will have the same size battery as the other two models, uh, but it will use that Shimano EP6 drive unit as opposed to the EP801 that we see in the 30 and the 10 series. The SUV 30 has that Shimano EP801, a Marzocchi Z2 fork, and a Shimano Q's 10 speed drivetrain, and that will use Magira AT2 hydraulic disc brakes. The 10 series that we see before you will come with a Fox 34 AWL front fork, a Shimano Dior XT drivetrain and Magura MT5 E-Stop uh, hydraulic disc brakes, both front and rear. A few other key details on the 10 from the other two models are the inclusion of a dropper post, uh, which is nice that it's already there. Uh, for one, it's super convenient to use while riding around town, uh, but for two, I would suspect that running a fresh new cable down through the frame and navigating around the battery would be quite the job. Um, and it is nice to have that already taken care of for you. Uh, additionally, the Lazine headlight and rear light are slightly different from the other two models. Uh, so you do get a more powerful front light and the rear light has the alert technology on it. So it will pulse when you are slowing down. You know, we've ridden this 10 for quite a while and it's gone through a few different uh, changes over that time, but for the most part, it's continuously found its way back to kind of how they ship it, which is a, a great indicator as to how much they thought about the Cayman SUV. Um, some things that we did change for ourselves are these Ergon grips, and I am running the Schwalbe Johnny Watts 365 tires. So they are the year round version of the tire that this bike comes spec with, uh, same size and everything. Uh, they just happen to perform a little bit better uh, in the colder months around here. The Cayman SUV does come with a 540 watt hour battery. Again, that is integrated into the down tube of the frame. So in order to remove it, you're gonna have to remove a lot of things to get in there. Uh, but the charging port is located on the left side of the frame. It has a nice seal on there to keep out moisture and debris. And I will say that we have gone through a lot of wet, mucky terrain and that charging port has been dry um, ever since day one. Together, Orbea and Shimano spec this EP801 drivetrain and the tune on the Cayman SUV to offer about five hours of ride time. Now again, that's all gonna be variable based on rider weight, how much cargo, uh, how much air is in the tires, how cold is it, how hot is it? But if that doesn't seem like enough battery for you to enjoy your adventures, the Cayman SUV is compatible with Orbea's 250 watt hour range extender. Um, this is a separate unit that you can order from Orbea. It will have its own mount to mount to one of the two different bottle boss mounts on the frame. And it has a little connector cable there that is uh, very low profile, so you don't have to worry about kicking it. Um, but that will up the overall battery volume to about 790, 792 watt hours. 
Uh, so that will give you another two-ish hours of riding. So well over seven hours of ride time, again, depending on <laughs> a lot of those different variables. As a whole, the Cayman SUV 10 as it sits has been able to offer me specifically in my riding terrain, my style of riding, continuously over 50 miles of range on a full charge. Um, obviously some factors come into play there, you know, rain or heavy winds, but being able to use that class three mode on the backcountry roads that are really flat and I just wanna get through them quickly and then hopping out into the woods and doing you know 2,000 plus feet of vert on gravel roads and then coming on back home. Uh, as a whole, it speaks a lot to the overall range that this bike can do and offer, uh, but equally speaks a lot to the comfort of this bike. I wasn't doing it just for testing. Those were fun rides for me and something that I repeated many times to be able to really enjoy this bike as much as I could. I've talked a lot about that Shimano EP801 drive unit. That's the newer EP8 motor from Shimano. It works very well on this platform and has worked well on all the other bikes that I've tested with that drive unit. Um, Orbea was able to work with Shimano for a custom tune. Um, you can use the E-Tube app and change some of the settings uh, with that motor, but I have left it as is because I found it to give me exactly what I need out of it, especially as a class three bike, zipping around town on those short runs and not worrying about battery range, uh, being able to put that thing all the way up into boost and really zip around town quickly has been an absolute blast. And the 85 newton meters of torque really shines well on this bike. Putting pannier bags on the back, um, you know, a little tote uh, to do a small grocery run on, adding 30, 40 pounds to the back of this bike, and then running around town to come on back home. Uh, having that torque in there really helps to get up to speed quickly. Uh, I think people often forget with cargo, uh, that initial first pedal stability is kind of always a little bit tricky for a lot of people. And uh, this bike, especially with the dropper post, being able to get low and get squared and centered and have all of that torque down there to get rolling quickly, uh, definitely is nice when you want to uh, enjoy your commute around town and not have to worry about going too slow in traffic. As we've continued to talk to Orbea on and off again, they reminded us that not only did Orbea's engineering team spend a lot of time on the Cayman and the Cayman SUV to design it to be the ultimate SUV electric bike, um, they equally spent a lot of time working on the charger for this bike. Um, Orbea made their own smart charger to work with the Cayman. And along with the bike having all those UL certifications to keep it safe for you, they really wanted to make sure that they were gonna be plugging a charger into this bike that was specifically designed for it. It has sensors within it to consistently be monitoring the battery to optimize the overall battery's life and optimize how well it charges when you're using it. Um, so it is something that is safe to plug in at your home and leave charging overnight. And if you forget to unplug it immediately when the bike's charged, that's okay. Um, the charger is constantly checking in on how things are going with that battery's uh, charge percentage and uh, not going to ruin anything if you happen to leave it plugged in for too long. Now I had a chance to ask Orbea a handful of questions about the Cayman SUV as I was learning more about this bike. And one of those questions was who they designed the Cayman SUV for. And the response was that the Cayman SUV as for anyone looking for a versatile city or adventure bike, those who want to take the fun route to work, or those who have variable surfaces on their commute. And as the conversation went on with them, it really expanded on the fact that this as an SUV bike is something for the person that's looking for a, a very capable bike, but doesn't want to have a very big full suspension knobby tire bike for commuting around town but they might want to take the fun way home and having slightly more aggressive tires a little bit of travel up there is ideal for a less aggressive terrain that might be on some of those more open bike paths on their commute back home now this is exactly how i find myself using the cayman suv um, time and time over again. Having slightly more aggressive tires on there, a little bit of front suspension travel, this meant that I could go out and ride the same routes as I would on my gravel bike, um, but I would be upright position, have a dropper post, and be able to take some cargo with me. Uh, equally, when cruising around town and having a spot for pannier bags, having that dropper post, having an upright riding position. I was comfortable and I was prepared to cruise, you know, to downtown or run over to the market and get some things for dinner. Uh, the same stuff I would use maybe a single speed or a cargo bike for. Um, but 
depending on the route I took, I could be a little bit more adventurous. I could venture off onto some of the bike paths that weren't paved and be able to, you know, maybe sneak in a quick little single track segment uh, on a fun adventure ride that I might have to skip if I was on a skinny wheeled bike with maybe drop bars. Overall, the Cayman SUV is a fantastic bike. Uh, specifically, it's a fantastic SUV electric bike, something that is capable and prepared for various terrains. And that is the main reason why I elected it as my editor's pick for 2023. Um, just thinking about an everyday bike and something that I was actually using more than everything else that is available to us. I just felt that this was the right bike for my type of riding. I don't think that it is for everyone, uh, but I think there are a lot of people that really uh, could use a bike like this more than just a cargo bike or more than just a single speed commuter that they might have already. Well, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, well, I'd be surprised, but if you do have a question, leave it down below. I'll try my best to answer, and if I don't have an answer for you, I will reach out to Orbea because I will want to know that answer as well. Um, be sure to check out Orbea's Myo program. That's a program that they have on their website to do slight customization on your order to personalize this bike for yourself, as well as to uh, use their tools and find a local Orbea dealer near you where this bike might be available. Again, Cayman SUV 40 starting at $37.99 and working its way up to this class three 10 series Cayman SUV for $52.99. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.